Hi guys, I'm going to make a movie on the uh, the new Beesman Vitotron 100 electric boiler. So I bought one for my main house. This is this house here is my cottage, I call it. But the main house needs a, a better heating system, so I'm going electric. The nice thing about electric boilers are that you never have to really clean them. You know, the heat exchangers kind of gum up with propane boilers and also... Uh, you know, natural gas boilers aren't as dirty as propane boilers. So you gotta clean those out every year and do a whole maintenance ritual. These electric things, set, set them and forget them. I guess you could probably vacuum them out once in a while. Um, anyway, I wanted to show you some things I learned on these. This this Beesman looks like a copy or, or identical to a next gen. And it seems like I was doing a next gen back in, I think it was 2015, I installed a next gen. It's been a while, but it looks like the same thing with Beesman's name on it. So the power is split. Um, you have to have two power sources, so 110 and a 240 volt. The 110 is to run the pump, so I actually just installed a, a pigtail, you might call it. I bought an extension cord from Home Depot and cut off the end and hooked it up. And the connections are like, here's a computer right on it, so it's top left of the boiler. A couple little connections down there. This this one on the far right, right there by my little screwdriver, that is the ground, the neutral, and the hot wire, the black wire, whatever. So that's for the pump. And then these here will be at 240 volts. So there's your ground, L1 and L2. So, um, and this is a 8kW boiler, 8 kilowatt hours. Um, and uh, it's about... It's about like, a, oh, I forget how many BTUs it is, but anyway, um, I, I know I did some research and you gotta have a number eight wire for this. And number eight wire takes a 50 amp breaker, which I've got here. Bought some wire at Home Depot and the 50 amp Squab a Square D home line. So yeah, so anyway, um, what else can I say? So yeah, so they recommend copper wire for the connections, probably so it doesn't galvanic corrode. And they're claiming you can do a number 10 wire, but you can't, well, number 10 is not rated for for uh, 8KW. 8KW is like 39 amps. And uh, anyway, I wouldn't try it. I would, bigger wire is better. And I guess I can fit the wire in there. I don't know, we'll see what happens. It looks like it's holes bigger or big enough. So that's that part. Um, the pump has a couple different speeds. Here you can you can adjust it this way. So I turn that up or turn it back, turn it back to the original position. Three speed pump, wheel little pump. Now these pumps come, uh, they must test it for pressure or test it for leaks, right? And I think these things are made in France. I'm not really sure. But when you're shipping them on 10, the winter time is like cold out. Like right now it's 11 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> and so um, we actually froze, froze up a pump. We couldn't figure out why the pump wasn't turning, so we kind of did some work on it and figured out it was really cold. It was frozen because it's sitting in the shop with no heat. So on the side of the box, it'll say 0 to 50 C. That means don't freeze the thing. But they're shipping it in cold weather, so hopefully nothing's broken, right? Um, I don't think you have to worry about that. I don't think there's probably that much water in there to worry about. But it's something Wiesman should probably look at and maybe switch to a glycol of some kind. Mixture, maybe 30% or 50% glycol. And then you don't have to worry about the stupid thing freezing up. And maybe that's what they're doing, but the little water that came out of here didn't feel like glycol. So yeah, anyway, um, it's like a plug and play boiler. So all you need is your your um, manifold, right? Where all your pipes connect to your loops. And then you connect this on. And uh, you know, if the house is a small house, you know, say 1200 square feet or less. This should probably work fine as long as you super insulate it. So, um, the yeah, 8KW, um, and I was gonna say to you guys, uh, yeah, so, um, oh yeah, plug and play. So yeah, it has a pump. It has, here's the heater part. This is the, the boiler, you might call it, elements in here. And it has a computer. And it has an outdoor reset, which will actually be Reading the temperature, colder it is, the hotter this thing runs. Warmer it is, the less warm it runs for the radiant flow heat. And has a pressure relief valve, which is to keep it from blowing up, safety thing. 
It has an expansion tank down here that has a Schrader valve. Those should be set probably between 15 and 20 pounds or something like that. And then it has the connections. Obviously blue is cold, the return, which is cold and hot or supply is, is red. But this is, a, I don't know what this is. This is a different, I always have to figure out how to hook these things up, right? So they work. So unscrew this guy. I got some PEX fittings on it here. These are one inch to three quarter PEX. And I got this washer. I took this up to Eric and said, what the heck do I do, man, with this thing to keep it from leaking? You see, it's, it's, a, it's a flat flat shoulder or flat surface on here. So we found a gasket made by Baxi. And he was thinking that Next Gen actually supplied some connections for this. But Beastman didn't say anything about it. But this is a, a Baxi part. Uh, for their boilers. It says sealing washer, PZ1. Um, Eric Cup Mountain Supply in Missoula set me up on this thing with this thing here. I don't know if you can read that if you need to see that. I don't even know if we need these, but I'm assuming we do. But I just can't hook that up to that, right? And, uh, and then behind this, I'm going to have some way of shutting it off or uh, isolating it. So I figured, yeah, put this washer in here. Maybe some of those uh, solar panel washers would work too. Those uh, what the phenolic washers, I think that's what they called them, something like like that, man. But yeah, this is probably now this is normal pipe thread for U.S. like NP what's it called now NPT or something like that. So anyway, um, this works. I can't do it one-handed very well holding the camera, right? But anyhow, there it's tight, and so I think that's going to hold pressure. Um, we'll see what happens. But yeah, uh, it's a really good boiler. I mean, I've had um, nobody call me in any complaints or anything. Once you get them up and running, they work really good. The challenging part is just getting there, you know, doing all your build and stuff. And, and then um, I'm going to have probably about a mm, little bit of glycol in this. I don't think you should probably ever exceed 50% glycol. If you can get away without glycol, you're better off. It's too slippery and it likes to leak. So um, it's more viscous than water. And so here will be my, my shutoff valves down down here on that. Sorry about the camera, taking a while to focus. Anyway, I got some other fittings here, the stainless. I'm going to do it all in PEX. I'm tired of trying to fix solder leaks and things like that with uh, water or glycol in them. So yeah, there's the Razoo computer. Um, sure looks like a next gen. Uh, pretty sure it is. Anyway, it's got Beastman's name on it, so good company. But they're kind of new. These boilers are just new for Beastman import in the United States, so we'll see what happens. Um, with that, here's the, the, the name tag on the side. Um, so I think it's going to be a great boiler if it's anything like the next gens. Like I say, use seven, forget them, and, and walk away, and you don't have to do any service work on them or nothing. And... That's what I like. I don't really like going back to people's houses and, and having to do service work, you know, maintain stuff. I just like to set it and forget it personally. So that's it, guys. Hope you have a good day. Be safe out there. Take care. Bye.